there's a um, thing that you have to do here to maybe it's just bottom that's what it's there can you go to the next slide no. the hour we are ready to go yeah okay good morning everybody this is the regex working group my name is Anton Verschuren as my co-chair Jim Galvin welcome to Singapore and of course the first thing we do on the agenda is read the note well anything you say here will be recorded and will be property of the ITF, so that you all know. Um, quick look at the agenda. Uh, we have some extra welcome and introduction um, statements, so please pay attention to that. We have, of course, our existing documents, and we have a report from the interim working group meeting and some new work. <laughs> so let's start. Um, we have Jeff Scribe, which is Barry, our area director. And we have a minute taker who is Rick Wilhelm. Thank you, Rick and Barry, for doing that. The note well, we just read. And of course, one of the things that we always mention is document management. We are a small group, um, so we always expect, you know, if people write documents, they need to be reviewed. Please volunteer for that and, and do it and put your comments to the mailing list even though there are just comments of, I like it, um, I have no further comments. Uh, it, further up in the meeting, we'll um, get to a point where um, that sometimes fails. One of the particular questions that we have for this meeting is document shepherds. Um, every document needs a document shepherd when it's submitted to the ISG. Um, so far, Jim and I have always sort of like search for a document shepherd just before a document was submitted to the ISG or when it was already submitted. Um, we had a suggestion from other working groups where looking for a document shepherd during adopting a document for the working group uh, would be a good idea because at that time um, the, the volunteer that is shepherding the document uh, also is aware that he needs to follow the process uh, while the document goes through the working group. Um, but we are sort of like worrying whether or not we should make that compulsory. So when we are adopting a document that a document author should be um, looking for a document shepherd. Uh, of course, the document shepherd should be somebody that is not one of the authors, uh, should be sort of like independent. Uh, but um, he needs to follow the document and have some content. And Barry's at the mic, so. Thank you for, this is Barry, thank you for picking on one of my real pet projects. Uh, a while ago, I wrote a document about extended document shepherding, and um, it, didn't, it didn't go anywhere as a publication, but it's in the working group chair's wiki. So anybody who wants to look at that, can go to the working group chairs wiki, which is accessible to everyone, and read that. And it's my opinion on, on how to keep documents moving along by active shepherding throughout the life of the document. So thank you for, for feeding into that. I, I agree that it's a good idea not to make it mandatory, but encouraging that to happen will keep documents moving. And remember, as you sh no matter how you shepherd a document, no matter when it's assigned, the document shepherd job is not just to write the shepherd write up and then disappear. We really want the shepherd to poke people and make sure that uh, things don't get forgotten, uh, which often happens when there are comments and then it takes months to resolve them. So thanks. Yeah. And, and having said that, Barry, um, being a doc document shepherd is not that hard or that difficult. Um, it is an excellent opportunity for people who are new to the working group or new to the ITF to get used to the, pro uh, to the, 
the process. Um, you don't have to have real um, content-wise uh, uh, knowledge, but just to be able to follow the process, meaning that um, the only thing you really have to do is write up uh, what happened in the working group, which is like, I don't know, there's a, a template for it you, that you can fill in. Um, and for the rest, when comments come back from the ISG, the only thing you need to do is make sure that all the comments are attended to. So you don't have to understand what's in there. You only have to know what, um, uh, if, if there are 10 comments back, that 10 comments have been responded to. Um, so for people who are new to the ITF, a great opportunity to get to know a lot of people and uh, get introduced to the um, process of the ITF. Okay, thank you. So that's about document, document shepherding. You have a comment? Um, okay, so uh, one last thing in the introductions is uh, please to ask everyone, um, as is typical, you know, that NOMCOM is here, they have office hours, there are folks around. Um, you know, they are always interested in comments about your leadership, uh, in this case, um, area directors. So uh, Barry, um, who is helpfully being our Jabber scribe here, let's keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to offer comments about, uh, about Barry. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, for all of the area directors and even those who are who are standing, uh, new people who want to come on board, the NOMCOM is very much looking for comments. And there is a, a form that you can go to on, on the website, on the NOMCOM website, so that you can submit comments that way or clearly just reach out to anyone who uh, you see with a, a NOMCOM sticker on. Uh, and offer to uh, offer comments about it. It's, a, it's an important part of our process. And, and of course, as always, uh, with respect to the uh, chairs, um, if you have comments about your chairs, you're, you're welcome to, uh, to, to stand up and say nice things at the microphone. You should see Barry in the back of the room if you want to say bad things. Um, <laughs> or you can always send a note to the ISG if you have comments that you want to make. Uh, yeah, uh, just to be clear, I am not up for any NOMCOM appointed position this year, so you won't be commenting on me in any case. Okay. To our next topic on the agenda, Exist existing document status. We have uh, one document in the uh, RSC editor queue, so that has passed the uh, ISG. Um, uh, it's the fee extension, and I believe everything is going well with that. Then we have two documents in the ISG evaluation state, which is the um, logging security extension. And we also still have the domain mapping for strict bundling. Um, now, that is one that we might give some attention to because there was some confusion in the ISG why an informational document came from this working group. Um, we have some problems um, uh, explaining that to the ISG, because usually we do standard strike documents. Um, this is, of course, something that's typically for the uh, IANA EPP registry, uh, where we allow documentation of any sort for proprietary or experimental or what, whatever extensions in, in EPP. Um, normally, the process for an informational document is go to the independent document stream. Uh, but this one we reviewed in the working group and thus it has, we gave it a tag uh, of being approved as an informational document for um, um, for the IANA registry. Um, I don't know if anybody has comments on that, uh, knows how the process works. Um, I sometimes feel the need, especially when talking to the ISG, that they have to repeat how the EPP registry, the IANA EPP registry has been set up that, uh, that way, uh, why we want to have any documentation. Um, the, the initial intent of the EPP IANA regist registry was that we were looking for any extension that was out there and we wanted to have it documented. And we wanted to take that as a uh, sort of basis of looking which ones we were going to standardize or which we could standardize and for other people to, to, to look at extensions that they might want to go and develop, but there already was something that sort of looked like it. Um, 
that's different from other IANA registries where you know you, you just have protocol numbers or anything that uh, is is set as a standard. Yeah, yeah. So for the bundling, so um, I, I see um, John Kang here in the back, and he uh, I, I have not actually had a chance to talk to him about this, but so the. Um, the, the action on this document, it is sitting with the ISG, um, and Barry will, may want to add on to this here as I get into this. So the idea is there's been some discussion about it being an informational document as a working group product. And the suggestion from the uh, a, a preference here would be to make it an informational document and have it come into the independent stream instead of, of being a, a working group product, that's all. Um, and so we will be asking uh, John Kang, I'll talk to you more about it afterwards. Hadn't had a chance to uh, catch up with you on this as we uh, put all this together. But that's the action that will go on this document. So uh, that's the way it'll proceed from this this uh, working group. So I think that's it. Yeah. And over to the mic here. Barry. Yeah, this is Barry. That, that's basically right. The, the, the issue isn't completely that it's informational, that it would be reasonable for this working group to put out certain informational documents. But something that appears to be defining the same kind of thing that's coming out of this working group as proposed standards, but this one being informational is what struck the IASG as odd. And uh, it will definitely go much more smoothly if this just goes through the independent stream. So that, that's definitely the recommendation. Uh, just on the other one to clarify, I, I don't believe that's an IESG evaluation yet. That went through last call and I need, it's the action is on me right now to make sure everything is ready and, and I'll put it in IESG evaluation. No, that was my interview. Scott. Um, Scott Holland back. Um, I actually have a little bit of experience with a situation similar to number two. Um, some number of years ago, we had this thing called RRP or the Registry Registrar Protocol that was used in you know the Network Solutions and VeriSign Shared Registration System prior to the existence of EPP, and there was a suggestion to you know bring that to the ITF and standardize it. It didn't work out quite that way. Uh, people didn't want to see RRP standardized, but they did want to see it documented, right? And, and anyway, so the long and short of it is one of the suggestions was to, to make it clear that this is, you know, a, a, an informational thing coming out of NSI and or VeriSign was to, in the title, say, the NSI Registry Registrar Protocol, which eventually became, you know, the VeriSign Registry Registrar Protocol. So one suggestion here, consider modifying the title, you know, to something like the CN NIC EPP Domain Mapping Extension, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I think that'll make it clearer that, you know, hey, you know, this is where it's coming from. And it helps to explain why this is an informational thing as opposed to something that you know is, is on the standards track. Yeah. Good suggestion. Yeah. Uh, just for clear, uh, I, I think as a orange document, uh, the status uh, so uh, maybe a lot of years uh, already uh, a lot of years work on this document. The original version I think uh, is is for standard track. So uh, after. Uh, working group uh, discussion. So this is uh, just for a few registries, uh, uh, mainly the, uh, Chinese domain name is registry. Uh, I think it's not all, not just for uh, uh, CNIC, like the Hollandsberg mentioned. Uh, as actually, is uh, for many uh, Chinese domain regi uh, registry. For example, in uh, uh, there's an organization called Chinese Domain Name Cons uh, uh, Consortium, a lot of, for, for example, as a HK NIC, SG NIC, MO NIC, so or Asia. So a lot of uh, Chinese domain registries there, they all follow. We also have a Chinese correct table, uh, uh, table mapping. So they will, they all follow this, uh, uh, this, this document. I think there's a few. Uh, registry, not not only for scenic. So because we have a, a long, uh, long uh, hard work, a lot of years work in, in this working group. So we, I, I like to continue as a working, uh, follow the working, uh, uh, working, working group document as the follow ISG evaluation. Thank you. This is Barry. If you want the document published, 
the best way to do it is through the independent stream. The IESG has made that pretty clear. So you can not do that if you want to, but it's not likely to get published if you do. Yeah, so, so I understand that, you know, it's used by multiple registries, but it's not used by all registries. We had, of course, in the preparation for this draft also, a bundling buff where there could also not be, there, there was also no consensus on what sort of bundling um, uh, was appropriate and could fit all. And one of the results of that was, okay, we're going to see if we can get the uh, strict bundling uh, variants um, documented for EPP. So, so I think for for uh, when we uh, initial discussion, we have a lot of uh, uh, maybe bundling uh, situations. So uh, the working group decides there are many bund uh, bundling system, there's a strict uh, bundling uh, registration and, and some are relaxed uh, bundling registration. So this this is mainly focused on straight bundling, uh, bundling, uh, bundling registration. So I think um, it, maybe it, it, it's, uh, it's already used by uh, Chinese domain name uh, community or registry or a, a, a lot of retros. So in future, may also can uh, uh, extend to used by other uh, name, uh, ASCII names, it's, it's, it's okay. For example, name one and name two, is, if they are the strict bundling, share a lot of information, I think they, they, all, can, <coughs> they all can use this uh, information, uh, uh, this, this document. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then we move on to documents in working group last call, which are two documents actually. It's the data escrow and the the, you know, the object mapping documents. Um, these could have been outside, out of uh, last call already, um, but there were last minute changes that needed to be made to the um, uh, DNDR object mapping documents. And we put that in the second working group last call and we didn't get, so far we only got two responses of people saying, okay, we approve this document in working group as call. This is not enough folks. Uh, we really need people to react also to a second working group last call and put a comment on the mailing list that you agree that the uh, changes in the second working group last call were not substantive or that they were, they were okay. If we don't get any response to this, this is not going to be published. So please um, re read it on the mailing list and state your support so we can move these documents along to the ISG. Oh, do you want to comment, uh, James? Uh, yeah, I'm Jim Gold from uh, VeriSign. I'm the document shepherd for the registry data escrow specification. And uh, in my responsibility as document shepherd, I did a detailed review of the draft, and I have um, some what I feel are editorial changes uh, to the draft, but I really want feedback from the working group to confirm that. Um, Specifically, and I'm going to post this to the list, by the way, I just have some highlights here. Um, one item is associated with, since the draft refers to registry, registrar, there's already an RFC that defines those terms to uh, refer to those, that RFC. Um, all, also, um, in the examples, as Document Shepherd, I need to validate the examples. And the issue was, is that um, there's use of dot, dot, dot. In the example. So what I did was I went in and created full examples for each of the uh, concrete types supported by the draft. Um, in doing so, I found errors um, in the example. And my recommendation was to include those examples in the draft for clarity. Um, as I got down to the XML schema, um, I noticed 
that the XML schema was importing the EPP com XML schema, which in essence created a hard dependency to the EPP RFC, which was, uh, was concerning to me. Uh, but then when I dug a little deeper, um, it wound up where the data type that was used, that used that reference, was actually not being used anywhere within the draft. So in essence, it was just hanging out there. So my recommendation is, and, and I'll put this on the list, the, the data type RR type um, is not being referenced. I don't believe it will have any issue related to removing it and any associated, uh, the import of the EPP comm schema into this schema. So in essence, I'll be looking for the working group to confirm that, but my recommendation is to go ahead and remove that. And then one final element is associated with um, supporting different types of deposits. So um, we have a scenario where um, for the registries, the ICANN accredited registries, we need to provide uh, a, it's called BRDA, that uses the data escrow drafts, but it's really not data escrow. They're really not. So we had um, some discussion, me and the document editor, um, to be able to make the drafts be explicit related to the fact that this is a different type of deposit. It's not data escrow, it's a form of deposit. Um, and so the decision was, or the recommendation was, was to not to change the types to find it in the base draft, but to actually put into the mapping draft uh, a tag or an indicator of the fact that this is for a different purpose. So since the mapping draft is in working group last call, I'll be making a recommendation to add an element to be explicit. And so that's it. Okay. Oh, about the, the, the length? What was that? Which one? Oh, well, yeah. Well, the, the concern, and you could speak up to it as well, um, is the fact that in changing the schema or removing an element from the schema, there's a concern related to whether or not that would cause any interoperability issues. And that if that were the case, um, we may need to be able to reach out to a broader set of folks to ensure that it, in fact, is not an impact. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, let me just, I'll add to that and add a, add a lot more context, I guess. So Jim Galvin speaking um, and not wearing a, a, a chair's hat here. The, these documents have some history. Um, and in fact, one of the issues here is that they are broadly implemented in the GTLD market, um, uh, uh, you know, amongst uh, registries and, and registrars. Um, so the documents have been required of GTLD uh, registries and, and some registrars here since um, the last round of new GTLDs. So the issue here is to make sure that whatever we do, we don't change these documents in a way that creates an interoperability issue or any um, or that they remain backwards compatible. So in fact, what Jim Gould was just talking about with wanting to change the mapping document to add an indicator in it, um, he's going to go back and, and think about the, the best way to do that so that the document remains backwards compatible, just in case. Um, and so that's just something we're bringing to the attention of this group. You know, the reality is we're going to hear more later about a, a, uh, our joint meeting with, with tech ops. Um, you know, that is sort of our opportunity to get broader exposure of some of our work with more folks in this industry. And we're going to see some examples of work that we're going to uh, bring from there to here. Um, but that's the context that's going on here. So, you know, Jim identified some, some you know, issues that we ought to clean up and just make um, uh, stable and, and clean, I guess is the right word, uh, but do that in a way that doesn't impact existing uh, implementation as, as much as possible. So that's the goal. And we'll bring this to the mailing list for uh, one last look when we got it all settled and, and have a suggestion for doing all of that. Thanks. Roger Carney confirming both of these documents are going to get revised, right? Right. So, Jim, again, uh, get revised, but not in a way that should affect implementations. So, yes, the version number on the documents will probably increment, um, but it should not affect anything that anybody does. Um, 
say so, so so do i get it right that probably the data escrow document is also getting a new revision uh, so we need to put it is it substantive enough to make another working class call after that uh yes this is jim gold again uh yes uh, I, based on the feedback and i'll provide a long list of feedback it will certainly require an update and based on looking at the mapping draft it's most likely would require an update Alex Mayofer, um, just to clarify, so the documents are going to be revised and the existing working group last call on the two documents will also cover the revised documents. So they're going to be revised like in the next couple of days or, or will there be a third working group last call? I'm, I'm confused about the timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so what does it doesn't mean? It doesn't make sense for me to 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 to, to review it on the working exactly. Group now. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's all. That's good. why. That's why. Okay, I asked, so I, that's why I asked the question. You know, you know the D and D object mapping. That one is in second working group last call. Um, if there are changes to that documents which are purely um, editorial, then of course it stays that way. But I understand from uh, from James now that. The data escrow document is also going through a new revision, uh, and so we are going to place another second working class hole for that one as well. So, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, um, for both documents, they will um, they they will get a a rev in the version number, right? As long as the changes are editorial and they don't affect interoperability in any way, there will not be another working group last call. It is that revised version taking into account the working last call comments that will then go forward and be published. But if there is a technical substantive change, then we will have to do a working group last call, although hopefully we can make it relatively short. We'll see. Correct. And this is Gustavo for the record. Yes. I mean, the time frame for these updates should be in a couple of days. So pretty quick. OK, so that concludes our current document status of at least anything that we're not working on anymore. Um, for an overview, this is our, our milestone review of the milestones that we are supposed to be doing or have done. Um, you'll see a lot of the, a lot of them already done. Uh, we move on to the um, existing work now. And we have Mario is going to present something on the, uh, the RDAP uh, documents. So let me put your slides up. Oh, how do I do this? Yeah, I, this is what I thought. Does it? I don't know, it's this one, of course. Well, okay. so which one do you want to start with? Okay, hello everybody. I am Mario Alfredo from uh, Dota T Registry. Just a couple of slides uh, to uh, no, no matter uh, partial response mm, to summarize the most uh, significant uh, changes uh, made on the documents since the last uh, meeting. Um, a lot of Mm, these changes uh, resulted from the feedback provided by Tom Harrison. Uh, thank you, Tom, for your extended review. It was uh, very, very appreciated. Uh, let's start with the draft about partial response in, in RDAP. Please, next slide. Uh, two uh, versions uh, have been published since uh, last meeting. In version 03, uh, the version 03 added the uh, unicorn name field in the ID field set when a returned domain or name server is an IDN. And uh, last, uh, the, the, the currently active version uh, contains a recommendation for the other providers to include a self link in any field set uh, different from the full field set. Uh, this is to uh, um, allow to allow the um, end user to request for additional information than than those than uh, the, the providing information. We 
can now move to sorting and paging uh, draft. Okay, next slide, next slide, please. Uh, in this case, three uh, version uh, have been published uh, since July. In the the version zero four, replace the uh, LDH name uh, with name among the sorting properties. Uh, the name uh, prop sorting property is mapped onto the combination of LDH name and unicorn name. This is because uh, in uh, in ADAP uh, uh, there exist two different elements, uh, different views of the same data, uh, and the, 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 this data is mapped on the same underlying database field. Uh, the unicorn name value must be taken while sorting. When the unicorn name is missing, the value of L LDH name must be considered instead. Uh, this, this version uh, uh, further clarif clarified the sorting logic with respect to the JSON value types and the sorting policy for multi-valued fields. Uh, in brief, this means that uh, JSON strings must be sorted according to the le less psychographic order and JSON numbers must be sorted according to uh, less in the numerical order with the only exception of uh, IPP addresses, uh, which uh, uh, are better clarified in version zero, zero 05. The JCAD sort test parameters must be ignored for the purpose of this sorting capability. And uh, when more than one value is retarded, uh, the sorting will be applied to the value identified by a preference information. Uh, it could be, for example, the pref uh, parameter, uh, jcal parameter. Uh, if a preference information is missing, the sorting will be applied to the, to the first value of the collection. Uh, the 0 05 uh, version clarified the sorting logic on IP ad addresses. IP addresses must be sorted based on the numeric conversion rather than the, 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 the JSON string the value. Uh, it, it clarified uh, as well the mapping between the sorting properties and the ARDA fields. Each ARDA provider may define other sorting properties than those uh, uh, provided in this document, uh, as well as it, it, it may uh, map those sorting properties on different location. For example, due to a different implementation of uh, the contact repre uh, representation, Th this is uh, 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 the subject of my next presentation here uh, in, in this uh, session. Uh, the current reactive version uh, renamed the page count uh, uh, property of page metadata element to page size and added a, a, new, a new property in page metadata element called the page number. Uh, even if page size and page number uh, seems to be redundant for clients because they can be derived uh, by code, uh, they can avoid the, an end user interactive uh, by a browser to feel disorientated in the, in the result set. Uh, finally, we have the, ah, no, uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> uh, there is another mm, mm, important uh, mm, thing to evaluate for next version. Is how to implement machination when links uh, can be used. For example, this is the case of the, a, a request uh, uh, submitted uh, via a, an HTTP post. Uh, currently, this is not allowed uh, in, the, in RDAP, but it could be in the future if you want, for example, submit complex query, uh, including uh, lot of predicates uh, joined uh, by Boolean operators. Uh, 
uh, the current structure of page metadata element element doesn't support this case uh, a solution could be for example to uh, add an optional property name in the next card so um, that could be used in place of links uh, when the 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 request is is made uh, by an http post uh, last uh, draft not here <laughs> but uh, well the the most uh, significant change made on the draft about reverse search is the uh, refactoring of the query model uh, the query model uh, was uh, made more uh, was made simpler, uh, the um, query string uh, URL error safe, uh, and the, um, I tried to win. I'll, I'll, I'll look, I'll look. Yeah. <laughs> to entertain you. <laughs> Yes, ah, there they are. Before. Before. Okay. And, and, the, and, the and the query model was made more generic. Uh, this is a new format for uh, submit a reverse search uh, query. Uh, the resource type must be one of the resource type path segments defined in section 3.2 uh, of RFC 7482. Uh, currently, the uh, possible values for resource type uh, is, are domains, name server, or entities, but maybe in the future it it, it could be uh, they could be uh, EPs or out nooms if we think that uh, entities are in relationship with uh, uh, any other object in RDAP. Uh, role uh, must be one of the roles described in section 10.2.4 or RFC 7483. Uh, for role independent searches, the value entity, generic value entity, must be used. Uh, and property uh, is uh, the entity property to be used in matching the search pattern. A predefined list of properties includes uh, format name, handle, email, city, country, and uh, country code. Obviously, the service may implement additional properties to those defined. Last slide is about uh, the, a, a comparison between uh, the previous way to submit a search query and the actual, uh, the current way to submit a search query. Uh, to highlight that the new uh, format is uh, simpler than the previous one. Alex, may I have a quick comment? Yes, I agree to that. I appreciate the new format as well. Much easier, much more natural. Okay. Thank you. Thank you too. That was the last slide, right? Yeah. Okay. Anybody any other questions for the past three <laughs> documents? No? Well, we have a question, uh, Mario. Uh, yeah. What do you think the current status of these three documents is because when I look at the milestones, um, yes, they were about to be published, but I don't know how many yes, revisions you still need. I know that they, mm, they, they, the current status of this document depends on their implementation, real implementation. I know that there are uh, some in this uh, uh, room uh, in, 
is going to implement uh, one or one or two capabilities of these documents. Uh, I know that, for example, Tom Harrison uh, is trying to to implement is uh, is implementing uh, the probably the reverse search on uh, EPs or out nums. Uh, uh, in, in the, is, is implementing the the sorting capabilities in in, in his uh, uh, adapt server. Uh, I mm, I don't know. I know that there are uh, some implementation about the paging uh, uh, made by Google, even if they are a bit different from the the the, the one uh, providing this document because. Uh, the 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 paging link is provided a, a, as a part of a notice and not have a part of the paging metadata section but uh, i am in contact with the google guys to uh, collaborate to 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 invite them to uh, implement this uh, this uh, solution in the in the in the adapt server uh, currently, I don't know any other implementation about uh, these documents. Uh, obviously, in addition to dot .it adapt server, uh, if there is, uh, if there are any other implementation, uh, I am happy to to uh, to contribute uh, to help uh, anyone. Uh, who is willing to implement uh, these uh, these solutions? Um, Tom Harrison, APNIC. I just had one comment on the reverse search document. Um, the sorting and paging document appears to allow, or it does allow, customizable mapping of the of the fields, whereas the reverse search document appears to be quite prescriptive about what uh, fields have to be used for the reverse search. I think it's. I think your intent is to allow that to be. Uh, service specific for reverse search as well. Um, so I think it's just a terminology thing in the draft. Just to clarify that servers can do what they want with the reverse search. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Alex Mayo for Nick.at. Um, just as a heads up, we might start uh, looking into implementing an RTED server in early 2020. Um, so we might not have time this year to start working on it, but, but it's definitely going to happen in the first quarter of next year. So uh, it's probably too late for the documents, but um, this is a heads up, so. I, I think that uh, we must have um, more time to evaluate these documents because, for example, in the final report for uh, ADAP pilot project, uh, uh, it state that uh, most of uh, most of uh, the submitted queries are lookup queries rather than search queries. So uh, I think that uh, now the ADAP implementers are uh, knowing ADAP better, so they can evaluate the uh, if if this solution uh, can contribute to make the, their adapt servers more efficient. So, uh, because it depends on the, obviously on the service provided by the other servers. Uh, so, um, if the mo most of the current uh, adapt implementation provide only the lookup queries, uh, we must have more time to, to evaluate this document. Mm. So, so, so what you're saying, the timelines momentarily on the milestone list, they cannot be met. Um, should we take one or two off the milestone list for the moment so that we can attend to other work that we want to do on our app? But, uh, really, I don't know because yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I can't imagine the the, scen the scenario from now to no, we will have discussion six in the months yeah, probably yeah. Uh, maybe there are some uh, uh, new other service implementation try to implement search queries uh, in efficient way so uh, 
probably they have to 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 implement uh, sorting uh, and paging uh, and if and uh, partial response if they want to make the implementation more efficient but uh, reverse search is another is a different uh, situation because uh, it depends on uh, the, the service that uh, the adapt server want to provide to uh, the end user or register or I don't know but um, for example we at dot at dot dot it we want to provide our register to with the capability to reverse search on their own domains I don't know if the, the this is the strategy of uh, other uh, other registries or, um, I repeat this uh, for with regards to the reverse search, this uh, uh, this solution was not uh, thought to uh, to be open to everyone. Uh, uh, we uh, at Dot IT we have strong uh, strict rules about uh, uh, the uh, provide the, the um, dissemination of. Uh, uh, personal information so we are uh, firstly uh, involving in the uh, under the GDPR rules so we uh, want to provide these uh, uh, capabilities mainly to our registrars uh, because we we receive a lot of uh, out of band requests uh, regarding uh, reverse search uh, regarding the uh, list of domains uh, mm, matching uh, some uh, search conditions search patterns now we are uh, no before before now we are uh, we 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 provide this service as a out of band solution we want to uh, integrate uh, this request in uh, in uh, in the ADAP server, so we we are, are not uh, uh, required to 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 give an answer uh, in an out of band uh, by an out of band uh, mechanism. Okay, so yeah, excellent. Well, this is Ulrich Wissam. Um, yes. Um, to start talking about the uh, privacy stuff, and I remember that uh, last yeah. time we had uh, somewhat intense discussions around it, and so um, and I see that you did uh, updates to the document. Yes, uh, part two. So I wanted to you to um, yeah elaborate on your update. But uh, according to the privacy consideration, you mean? Yeah, yeah privacy considerations and the yeah, security. I, considerations. I have already. Mm, stayed in the document that uh, uh, obviously this uh, we regard to the reverse, reverse search uh, the reverse search capability these capabilities must must be must be provided i repeat must be provided according the uh, national rules or any other uh, rules about uh, the uh, provisioning of personal information so uh, in the in in if we if I look to the uh, implementation the dotted implementation that uh, uh, we 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 want to provide this uh, this capability to our registrars they are legitimated to uh, to see the personal information of their own contacts not the inf personal information of, of uh, other registrar contacts contacts obviously uh, and this is the the, the principle inspiring this uh, this solution uh, uh, the, the the new query model uh, allows the other service to provide the the, the reverse search the reverse search uh, in uh, according to an authorization uh, uh, according mm, 
to an authorization implementation based on a payroll basis. So, for example, you can protect more registrant, uh, uh, reverse search on registrant than the reverse search on technical uh, contacts, for example. Uh, this is, um, was not foreseen in the, in the, in the previous version, but um, I repeat, this, this I, I don't know if we are the, uh, isolating this, uh, in the, we are the only one thinking that, that, that there are, uh, the need of this, uh, of this solution because we, we are, uh, we, we, we are, we receive um, a lot of requests asking for the same, uh, same information, which is the, uh, the number of domains related to this technical contact. Or what are the domains, which, which are the domains related to this technical contact, which are the domains related to this uh, registrant, but from our registrants, obviously. So I don't think that the need for the reverse search is in question. I think that in question is the um, the wording of the privacy implications. Because right now it, it, it says, oh, you should follow the law. And I mean, that is basically true always. <laughs> it's uh, like, you know, uh, that's just stating the obvious. I think the privacy considerations really would do well in describing what the problem is and probably giving some guidance in what implementers should look at uh, yeah. and what they should do. Um, just saying follow the law is really not that helpful. So, uh, so I want to, I, I, mean, I want to say, I, 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 I'm sorry. I want to jump yeah. in here as, as chair and, and say that I don't want to fall into the discussion, all the privacy discussion we yeah. had last time. It, it is true. Uh, Ulrich, I, actually, I, I do share your concern and what you're saying about the privacy considerations as written, but let me suggest that we take that to the list to, to look, to update that, that side of things. I want to give, uh, Alex a chance here to, uh, have a last word. And then I want to drive towards a milestone discussion. Yes. Thanks. Um, Alex Mayer for Nick.at. Um, just the processing uh, very quickly. Um, in order to, to solve like the MyThumb problem that we mentioned before, um, do we have any feeling that any of those three documents is more advanced than the others, more stable, yada yada, and so on and so forth, so that we can try well. to get that one off the list of the milestones as fast as possible, even though if we haven't like 100 implementations for it yet, but we have a good God's feeling, right? I, and I must call it. Yeah, and, I think and leave that the others on the master list. My opinion is that uh, uh, sorting and paging and partial response um, don't need more uh, updates. As uh, far as I know, uh, it is. It, they 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 seem to me. Uh, quite comprehensive, so I, I don't know. So they only wait for implementation, that's what you're saying. Sorry. I... So they are only waiting for more yeah, implementation. Yeah, more, more implementation. Okay. So, but, but still, I mean, you have done an implementation of that, obviously, I suppose, yes. Um, so uh, maybe it would be a good idea to find out if there are other implementations for that. Yeah. Find out whether they are compatible. Yes. Yeah. Interoperable, I would say, between clients and servers. Um, and also like people like me, yeah, who are like looking into implementing that, that they would maybe try to do a sort of review on that and, and uh, list any potential implementation issues they would have. And after that, we could maybe like working through Blast call it. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember. Do you have implementation status section in the document? Yes. yes. Perfect. Good. So maybe update date, uh, update that, and and and, and get it after much. that last call, the, those those two documents but go for it. Basically, yeah. they implement uh, the, the, this document provides solution, well known solution in other REST services. So uh, I mean the 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 uh, the, 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 the topic is. Uh, are quite clear to me. Uh, uh, 
Yes, the, 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 yeah. the, the basic idea is to deal with uh, huge result sets, for example. So uh, I don't know if you want to provide uh, larger result sets uh, in, uh, in your implementation in an efficient way, because uh, obviously you, you, you can provide domain uh, uh, searches uh, uh, returning uh, uh, quite always uh, a truncated result set, but in, in my opinion, this is not an efficient solution, for example. So let's, let's, let's look at those um, one final last call and then, I mean, yeah. it's up to you guys, of course, let, let, but let's, I, let's... I'm, I'm just proposing a way to get them yeah. off the muscles. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Wilhelm, last question. Um, I'll, I'll be very brief, Rick Wilhelm. Um, it, listening to this, it strikes me that uh, not just server implementations are helpful, but also client side implementations yeah. are helpful. In the and speaking, uh, two things that offer example: one in the RDAP uh, pilot working group back over the summer, Mark, Blan Mark Blanchet's work on the client side was instrumental in driving a lot of clarity. And then I'll note the um, and, and I'll admit that I haven't been following this this closely, but from what you said and uh, Tom Harrison's work was instrumental in helping to flush yeah. out other problems. So I think it's not just server implementations like Alex was noting, but also client implementations that would be helpful yeah. in drive, trying to drive out some of the uh, things. I think that most of you uh, know uh, my, op my personal opinion about uh, how to implement uh, an app clients. I, uh, at Dot .it we are uh, thinking about a self-configurable a self-configuring client uh, based on the server specification provided by the other server. So uh, uh, this is my opinion. So uh, probably next year will will be uh, we we'll release a another client based on this uh, uh, basic idea. Thank you, Mario. So thank you. You, you got the response. You know, we are trying to move these documents forward okay. and get them off the milestone list. And if anything needs to be done, please do it. Do it on the milestone list. Or do it on the main list, sorry. Okay, next presentation, existing work. And this is actually something that is not on our milestones list. Um, but it came back, uh, Gustavo. So if you could please also put a little history on the status of this document, please. Sure. Um, Gustavo, I can. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a really old draft. It was published in 2013. And this draft describes uh, the services that are provided by the TMDB, which is the Tramer uh, database, something that was created for the ICANN Tramer Clearinghouse. And registries and registers use this draft to implement the integrations with those services. Um, when the first version was published, we already had like several conversations with registries and registrars regarding this. So the first version was quite uh, mature and stable. Uh, there were no major changes since uh, May 2014. The intended status of this draft is informational. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be an issue with the going uh, this being a working uh, work, uh, working group document, or we need to go to independent independent tracks, I mean, I don't know, that's that's a good question, right? Um, as I mentioned before, this draft has been implemented by registries, registrars, and that clearinghouse in the case of the GTLD space. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, back in 2016, the idea was to publish this as an RC. Uh, the draft was adopted by the EPP extension working group, which is the working group that uh, precedes this uh, working group. Uh, on, on, on the last phase of the draft, we received uh, some comments from Patrick. Uh, and based on those comments, we had several, uh, well, we had meetings with Patrick and we modified that document that is there. That document is an ICANN document. It's not related to this draft. Well, it's linked from this draft, but it's not uh, like, like a normative reference. Well, I don't remember, sorry. But at the end of the day, we, re we modified that document. Uh, we verified some things with in the clearinghouse and everything worked out. So we're good. Uh, next slide. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, 
there are no pending action items on this draft. It should be fairly easy to publish it as an RC. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is really mature. I mean, it has been in operations for years. Uh, in the case of the GTL space and new utility program, it's used, I mean, everywhere. And this draft is linked from several legal contracts. So we really want to have uh, an stable reference because it has been expired for some time in the past and it's maybe not a good idea to have an expired draft link from a legal contract. Uh, next slide. And that's it. I mean, I don't know if you have any questions. Nobody has a question, then we, we have a questions. Okay. okay. So um, Jim Galvin, not wearing a chair hat. Um, so this, this document, like the data escrow documents, has um, a, a fair amount of history and, and existence. Um, so it also has fairly broad deployment, but documenting it was um, an, an issue because from a technical point of view, it was just missing the ICANN side. It was missing the policy side of it. Uh, what it needed to look like and some we needed some changes on that side uh, in order for this document to be considered stable. Um, so uh, what we need actually still at this point is um, the one objection was from Patrick Falstrom way back when you you had the reference in here. Um, we would uh, we're, we're going to seek just to make sure that uh, Patrick wants to relieve his uh, his objection that all of that has been satisfied and then this document like the escrow documents Again, well, this is actually in better shape because there's been no changes to the document. Um, it's just that it now has a context in which to live, which is accurate and, and correct and functioning um, with the matching rules defined by, uh, by ICANN. So um, we'll be able to uh, release this document and do a working group last call and move it along um, as long as there's uh, no objections. We need that one objection from, from Patrick to be uh, uh, just, just to be uh, pulled back, I guess is the phrase for it. But unless anyone else has any questions or comments, I'm just it's about the matching rules. Yeah, that. So in in his slides, you'll see in his slides he has a reference to, um, you know, the update that is now present on the ICANN side that uh, fixes the conflict. Yeah. Jim Reed, uh, just a quick question for clarification: Are you going to publish this? Plan to publish as an informational RFC, or are we going to have potential feedback, a uh, pushback again? from the ISG and then pass out to go down the individual submission path? I, I'm not expecting uh, any pushback on this one. It should be an informational document and I expect that it, it would be uh, okay for it to go through um, as a working group um, uh, document work product, but Barry's up there, let him speak to that. Yeah, this is Barry. I can't speak for the ISG as a whole and who, who knows what some AD will question. Yeah. But as I said before, it is reasonable for this working group to put out informational specs when it makes sense for them to be informational. So. Okay. Okay, thank you. So you wanted to have this put up, uh, Jim, because. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you. Uh, just going back to this particular slide that was there uh, and just to recap what I think are some actions coming out of this group as we look at our milestone list. And before we get to talking about new work and, and jumping into the, to, to the next thing here. Um, we had, uh, in August, we had two milestones for the data escrow documents. I think that we'll leave those milestones alone for the moment because those documents are just about ready to be, where they're at the tail end of their working group last call, to be submitted to the ISG. So uh, at least, you know, uh, the uh, chair's suggestion here would be that we not change the milestone date or anything at the moment. We'll just let them progress uh, since they're in theory going to be pushed out soon. And that should be fine. With respect to um, RDAP, we had September, October, and November uh, deadlines for partial response, assorting, and paging, and then reverse search. I, I believe what I heard from Mario is that uh, he believes that the partial response and the sorting and purging, 
purging. <laughs> Little faux pas. Sorry about that. Partial response and sorting and paging <laughs> documents are, um, you know, stable from his point of view, which suggests that the next obvious step for them is, is to consider whether or not they're ready for publication. We do have an issue about implementation and how much further we want to push on implementation before the working group agrees for them to go forward. So um, I'm thinking that one way to, to force that question is to suggest that we, we move those into working group last call so that we can have people comment explicitly that they don't want them to go forward without a particular action. Uh, I'm thinking that we just want to find a way to force the working group to respond and, and, and react to these documents. And then if there are implementation concerns, people can speak to that and then we can you know, decide at the end of that that we're going to wait for another period and do that. Um, I, I would like to suggest that we actually put those two into working group last call and we'll see how that plays out. If it ends up that we want to hold them back because we want more implementation experience, then we'll have to turn that into updating the milestones with respect to those two documents. And one option might be that we not actually have a milestone for them, okay? And you'll see why that might be relevant as we get into new work and we start moving forward. Um, uh, or we might just update the milestones, but we can make that decision later. So working group last call for those two documents following this IETF is where we'll go with those. The reverse searching document, I get the sense that there's still work to be done there. We don't think that that is as stable as the other two. So uh, what we need to think about here is what to move the milestone to, since it really was due now. Um, and I don't know if, if Mario, if you want to say anything about that now, or we can take that to the list. We can just see what, um, listening to my coach here saying, let's just take it to the list. Uh, we should make a decision about how far we want to push out the milestone for that. So um, we'll try to uh, pass that message on to the working group and people can take the time to think about what they want to do there. Okay. Um, open ID we'll just leave alone for right now. Um, although maybe, um, I, I don't know, Scott, if you want to say anything about it or not, you don't have to feel obligated to, but you're standing up, so please go ahead. Sure. Scott Holland back. Uh, with respect to this document, I think the protocol piece is actually pretty solid. It hasn't changed much in the last year or so. Um, and, and in fact, you know, the, the different machinations of people who have looked at it, like in the ICANN context in particular, you know, while they move the bits and pieces around, they're still basically using the same protocol. And so I feel pretty confident about that. I am much less confident in whether or not I got the IANA registry bits correct. Uh, you may recall there's a, a section in there re um, registering OAuth claims, uh, you know, that are used to help document attributes of appropriate identities. And there's a lot of dependence there on what comes out of ICANN's um, you know, expedited policy development process, uh, you know, for anyway, uh, lots of acronyms there. I, I think at some point we have to make a call. I could pull out the IANA registry bits and just say, hey, look, when ICANN gets its act, to, act, act together there, those claims can be registered. You know, and then the protocol piece progresses independently, or we just hold on a little bit longer and try to capture the bits we know will be necessary, you know, to meet ICANN's needs. Um, and I guess I'm kind of leaning towards, let's just hold on a little bit. Um, they seem to be making progress. And, you know, who knows, six months from now, they may actually have some outputs. So thank you for that. I mean, speaking for myself, I, I, I'm inclined to not make a milestone change at the moment. I mean, on the ICANN side, there's a certain expectation of something to appear relatively soon that the RDAP working group on that side can actually do something with. And we'll have a better sense by the time we get around to the next ITF meeting what we want to do with this document. Um, we may actually be working on it by then um, or, or, or not, but in any case, we'll have some data with which to decide what to do about the milestone. So, okay, with that, back to you. Thank yes, you. okay. So, we were looking at the um, milestones, of course, because the next topic on our agenda is a report of the joint ICANN Tech Ops and Reg uh, Interim Regex meeting. And based on that, we're going to have a look at our milestone list to see what we want on there. So let me just put the slides up. Uh, interim meeting. Right. And Jim is going to 
present on this chair head off, of course. Okay. So this is me presenting as myself, not as um, uh, co-chair here, but uh, go to the next slide. So we did something new and interesting. We've sort of mentioned this a few times here, but let's try to be very clear and, and specific here about the relationship and what was going on. Um, the Tech Ops is a technical operations group in, in ICANN, and it is comprised of uh, essentially technical representation from registries and registrars on the GTLD side, um, and there's quite a lot of them in there. Um, and, you know, obviously many more of them than are, than are here. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, it just turns out that ICANN is just the place where you get a lot of uh, registrars in particular, and certainly more registries than, than we have here in, in this room. Uh, to participate. So it's an ideal place to have and make sure that we get exposure of particular, um, you know, technical details uh, about registries and registrar operations. So we did something new this time, which was to have an interim meeting for regex, but we made it joint with the tech ops group uh, at the last ICANN meeting, which in fact was two weeks ago in Montreal. And I had put this same slide up there uh, at the beginning of that meeting as a way of introducing the IETF relationship to them. And so the, the slide is here as a way of introducing the ICANN relationship to the IETF so that everyone is sort of on the same page as to, to what's going on here. Um, in particular, there are um, 14 potential documents to um, you know, ask for the working group to adopt uh, and then push them through on the registry registration services side of the work stream here. Um, and, you know, that would then create a, a set of milestones for this group to work with. And, you know, folks from that side, uh, we, we believe that we have gotten many more of them to join the mailing list. They're not likely to appear physically at an ITF meeting, but they will be on the mailing list and will be able to move documents forward and participate in that way. So the goal at the interim meeting was to review those 14 potential documents um, and you know think about what they would consider the priority and how they wanted to approach them. And then you know come here to seek adoption. Think of the tech ops group as a design team in, in an IETF context is sort of the way to view that body of people and the, and the work that they do. Um, and then to bring those documents to this group and consider adoption here and move them along on, on the IETF side. So that's sort of the relationship and, and what's going on there. We conducted that joint meeting under the IETF note well. So that was exposed there in, in that group and you know everybody aligned with that. So that was a good thing. It's worth noting that in the middle of the slide is a um, best practice dot, uh, uh, actually that should be best, no it is, it's best practice dot domains um, website. There is a um, group of registrars that have created a website, all 14 of these documents in their original form from that group are on that website. Um, and so they had created a place where they had put things. They in fact have, uh, those documents are all produced in our internet draft format for that matter. Um, and that's where they all were and having that discussion. So go ahead. Um, Alex Mayhofer, I'm a little bit picky here, but uh, you do know very well what internet standards in the ITF context means. It's like the very core of the internet protocols that have extremely broad deployments and with a massive amount of implementations. I don't think that any of those 14 documents qualifies for that. So at least a good portion in terms of, those of like internet standards. I don't know how many internet standards we have, but definitely not the 8,600, yeah. So fair enough, I, I, I take your point and let me, um, yeah, uh, you're right. Um, I, I was pretty free wheeling with saying the word standard. I, I've been called on that before. <laughs> Um, in fact, just earlier this morning before this meeting. Um, so yeah, we, we need to be a little more careful about use of that word. It may be that some of these things really become informational documents, uh, for example, as opposed to to a standard. Um, and uh, I do need to be much more careful about that in the IETF context, the use of that particular word. So um, uh, fair enough, we'll take that on board. And as part of our review and evaluation of these things, we'll make a better determination of their status and, and what we're supposed to do with them. So next slide. Um, so this is a quick rundown of what we talked about there, and I will touch on these briefly, and, and I'll spend actually a bit more time on the last one. Uh, the 14 documents can actually be brought together and categorized into these five documents in these five areas. 
So registry mapping, um, we really only referenced it in the in the in the interim meeting. Uh, registry mapping, as you know, has actually been work that has been moving forward slowly uh, under the auspices of this working group. It's not really an adopted document in this working group, um, but there is an internet draft which is out there, and there is a small set of people who have been progressing that document. Uh, in particular, you know, uh, Roger Carney and and um, um, uh, has been uh, leading. Uh, some interim meetings along the way here. We've had several in trying to advance this work. It's not yet ready to be adopted by the working group or to seek adoption of it, but that work is proceeding. So we're just going to leave that one where it is at the moment. The secure auth info transfer and the uh, registry maintenance notification and unhandled namespaces um, have all been uh, documents here. The secure auth, uh, uh, have all been internet drafts. The auth info uh, document got quite a lot of discussion um, at the uh, tech ops meeting. Um, and I think there is a uh, revision of that document which will be produced based on comments that were received there, but all three of these are now in a relatively stable state, um, and they will. Uh, we expect that we will seek working group adoption uh, for all three of these documents, or at least the next version of Secure Auth Info Transfer, and then the other two which have existed for some time. We've had some discussions about them in this working group, in, in the working group meetings, um, and we will uh, these authors will uh, bring these documents and be seeking working group adoption on them in the near future. And so we will uh, seek to put them onto our registration services side of the work stream in this working group um, and be looking to get some uh, uh, milestones for them. And then I guess as was asked for before, um, we'll need to get uh, document shepherds for each of those as part of the adoption process. The registry registrar uh, reporting document as you know, we have uh, we've had discussions here about an internet draft. Uh, uh, as you can see, the reference on there, the data set draft, um, it, the data set file format draft, um, and uh, in particular, the registry registrar mapping was a new uh, proposal, a, a concept which uh, myself and and my colleague, who's actually out there remotely, Joseph Yee, had brought to the tech ops group to have some discussion about it. And what I'd like to do here is just to uh, make a presentation of a revised set of slides. It's just a few slides to sort of talk about the concept and expose it here in this group so that everyone has, has seen it once. Um, we don't have a document that's an internet draft that's been published, so we're not going to immediately seek uh, working group adoption on this thing, but it is work that we expect at some time in the not too distant future. There'll be another internet draft, and so there'll be more discussion um, about this as, as we move it forward. I expect that it will get uh, um, a good deal more discussion in the tech ops group in particular, because the registrars and, and the registries there will want to talk about um, you know what that document looks like and what its relationship with the uh, data set file uh, format document is. Um, so that we can bring both of those together um, and decide what to move forward in this working group and seek working group adoption on those things. So that's actually the readout there. I, I, will, I will jump to giving a presentation about the reporting document in a moment, but let's have a discussion on these five things. And please, George. George from APNIC. So I would, I'd like to start by saying I think you have a really good sense of the momentum in your agenda and you've done a good job of a reduction of what needs to be done. You've got a cogent story. Let's do this work. So viewed from 10,000 feet, this is good. You have a backlog of work. You're looking at your adjustments in pace. This is what you're going to carry forward in your stream. This is good. I now step to another view. I'm in the other half of the room. I'm in the RDAP half of the room. The meeting, the pace of the meeting is heading from somewhere around 6040 to 7030. A business to business function, registrar registry function, compared to the public service of RDAP. We don't actually get mind share. And it's probably a function of the, the nature of our work. And it's not a comment more than a whinge, but essentially, we have very little mind share in this room, and you're building a lot of work. <coughs> that's about registry registrar, business to business, an important function. And I'm sitting over here saying, where's our mind share to move forward in the public RDAP commitment? We, we don't have this investment in time and energy coming to say, look at the body of work, let's do this, this is our stream. Your stream is progressing, our stream is paddling a little slower. 
It just feels strange. I don't think this is a problem you can fix. I guess I'm just whinging at the world. Rail, rail, <laughs> rage against the night. Um, I, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Yeah. Dylan Thomas. I, actually, I'd like to address that if I, if I may. Sure, go I was going to respond too, but I'll, I'll let go you go first. Slide. Go back a slide. Oh, go back a slide. Go back a slide. Is that the... That, yeah, there's only two slides, so... Yeah, so that, okay, well, this did, so this didn't say anything useful for that, but the, the bit of taking the RDAP core protocol documents and progressing them to internet standard that we discussed... That's going to be new work, and that's coming up. That's so, not a presentation we've had yet. Right, but, um, and I think, so I, the, the answer there is I think... <laughs> over there, thank you. Uh, I think you'll see more meat when we get to that. Yeah. But, um, so... I wouldn't worry about it too much now. <laughs> so um, just putting on a chair's hat for a moment, uh, recall that this working group uh, essentially has two work streams, if you want to think of it that way. We have an RDAP work stream and a registration services work stream. And the RDAP work stream has just been focused on Mario's documents primarily, the ones that uh, we, were, we were just talking about. But we will see shortly that there is going to be a, a new work item um, that's going to be proposed when we when we get there. Um, well, actually, it's not even on the slides on the agenda. It's going to come up under any other business, for that matter. I just happen to have a heads up that is coming. So there will be some some movement there. Uh, but but you're right, George. You know, I mean, we have two work streams, and so we have to develop and and move along work in both of those spaces. And and the chairs do know that responsibility and accept that. And and we're certainly uh, paying attention to that detail, as far as that's concerned. Okay, let me go back to just being myself here for the moment and we'll go to the slides on the registry registrar reporting and while he's working to bring up those slides. So again, um, this is just an introduction of a, of a, of a concept. Um, there are between registries and registrars, uh, they do communicate. Um, there's a production, you can, you can bring slides up, yes. Which one? Oh, sorry. Yeah, the, for the, they they um they they do communicate on a on a regular basis by a, a production of some reports. So registries do provide some data, a summary of some data back to registrars as a way to facilitate their interactions and and how they conduct business. Um, and you know it's generally referred to as reporting in, in this context. I mean that's sort of the work that that happens in all of this. And so every registry in today's world produces a set of reports that registrars consume. And the overall goal here and the objective is to create some mechanism for creating stability in what those reports look like. Okay, um, and that just seems, and since that really is a, a technical function, it, it feels like it's an ideal thing to have in the IETF, that sort of functionality. Um, now to allow some flexibility in, in all of this, uh, that's really what this is, this is about. So for here, this is just about presenting a, a, a concept which was presented there um, it uh, half of this was reasonably well received and seemed to get a, a good traction and support. And then there's a set of issues that were kind of set aside as still discussion points. And I will separate those two here as we're going through these slides, and then we'll we'll see where we are. Um, so this is if anybody has any comments about this, we certainly would welcome all of that input. Um, but next steps here again are that this will just continue in its design effort for right now. Um, so this is just, uh, you know, what do you think? Um, you've obviously never seen this before because there's no document except for the slides that exist. Um, but any reactions? And then um, you'll now have the slides and we can continue some discussion on the mailing list about this too. So with that as an opener, let's go to the next slide. So this is um, uh, kind of a, an example. If you were to look at the best practice domain site, you would see that there is a specification for you know at least these three reports, transaction report, a premium name support, a domain info report. There's some specifications there. And you know, this is what these things look like. They are reports that are um, you know, have these columns in them, this this set of data elements that are there, and and then you you know you create a file which has that data in it. Um, just think in those terms in, in terms of what's created. And so this is just an example of the fact that there's, you know, commonality across here. And in fact, you can run into issues about um, whether or not, you know, status in each of those columns is the same status and whether it means the same thing or not. You know, so you're going to have column headings there for, for the data that's being reported and what it means. Next slide. So um, what we have today are reports that are static. You know, uh, each registry just decides for itself what it's going to do and it does it and that's a done deal. Um, the registry chooses that format, the contact, 
uh, content, you know, syntax of the reports, and the registrar is just required to comply with whatever the registry does. And that's sort of the model that exists today and what's there. The kind of model that we're looking to get to here is that the reports are still static. Um, you know, maybe stable is a better word here than saying static, uh, but the format of the report is is standardized, or that there is a there's a framework, there's a there's a known mechanism for understanding the report. So rather than the registry just being able to unilaterally decide what something looks like, there's there's a a framework and a and a stability about what that report is likely to look like for registrars to consume them. Okay, so to facilitate that and provide a, a bit of a more um, uh, stable uh, uh, mechanism for that communication. Obviously, we still want the syntax of the elements in the report to be standardized. Uh, we, don't, we don't want people just inventing anything that they can put in these reports. Um, and to some extent, you can imagine that even with EPP, for example, I mean, we know what the registration data looks like. There are some fairly known definitions of, of a lot of this data that's there. Okay, there's derived data that's in some of these reports, but there's a certain stable set of data which is there. We know what that is. So that's the reporting elements, you know, being being standardized. You want to know what's in a report um, and, and be able to uh, consume them easily um, and not have to look at each one as, a, as an individualized registry-based thing. Okay. And then we also want to have a, a known set of reports. We want to have a way to consume what reports are likely to look like. Okay. So um, that's sort of uh, you know where we where we are today and and kind of the model of where we'd like to get to in all this. Next slide. So there basically are two uh, principal parts of this proposal at the moment. Um, the concept here uh, in both of these parts. So this is part one. Had uh, some pretty good uh, traction in the tech ops group last time. But from the point of view of the ITF, what we do is we create an IANA registry. If you think of these reports as being a CSV file, right, that's what each report would look like. So if you imagine that as the concept here, uh, we create an, e, a, uh, an IANA registry and we model this after the way the EPP extensions was done, which is, you know, what sort of formed this group and caused this group to come into existence um, when we first did that document. And so the column heading registry would have the following information that's listed there. Each particular column heading would get an ordinal value, and you'll see why that's relevant um, when we get to the example. Obviously, the name of the column, a reference to the definition of the data that's there, which of course would also define the syntax for the element. Okay, and then you want to know where the element came from and some other administrative elements. But you know, that's just sort of the registry that's in IANA. And it would be a first come, first served registry, much like the EPP extensions registry is. So there's no the only strictness here about it is that the whatever you put in the registry is self-consistent and doesn't conflict with anything else that's there. In this particular case, that's you know kind of important, that detail. If people use a, a status, you want them to use the same status um, you know, for that particular purpose. Um, so that's that concept. Go ahead. Hi, Jim. Jim Reed. Just a statement of the bleeding obvious here, but whenever these uh, things are going to be put in a first-come, first-served basis, I hope there's going to be information recorded about who it was that asked for this particular column to be added to the registry. I've imagined that we could have a situation where a registry asks for some kind of a column extension to be put here, it doesn't get used, gets forgotten about, and then comes comes along say five, ten years time, and then says, "Is anybody using this thing? Who's responsible for it? Can get rid of it?" Yes, that's just sort of a standard problem. First come, first serve registries. I do understand that. Um, you know, the only requirement would be that the reference to the definition exists. Maybe we do need to have a process for, for cleaning up the registry if it gets big, but we're not going to address that right now. We don't have, the, we don't, we don't speak to that issue even with EPP extensions. Yeah. I wasn't specifically speaking to the issue of the maintenance, but if this does crop up later, it's finding out who was responsible for having put that first thing in the first place. If we capture the information about who's requesting these things at the point oh. they're added to the registry. Yeah, no, uh, register onto the element. It's captured right there. Okay, right. It's one of those things, yes. Yeah, we do know who put it there. Which doesn't mean that you're going to be able to reach them again because you know how that goes. Yeah. Email addresses change. I mean, you know, that doesn't really make the problem go away, but okay, next slide. Now, there's actually four of these slides, and, and I'm not really going to walk down through them. This is just intended to show that looking at the nine documents that are on the best practice domain site, we simply collected together um, all of the column headings and all the data that was 
uh, requested to be in those reports. Um, you can click to the next slide there. You can see here there's an ordinal uh, reference number. Each each particular column heading gets its own gets its own ordinal reference. You'll see why that's important in a in a moment here when we get to part two. And of course, there'd be a reference to these things uh, with respect to you know doing this particular work. Presumably, we would pre-fill this registry with whatever we define this first time around. So the RFC number there is just the same for all of them, whatever we put in our first document if we get that far. And as is typical in these mechanisms, in this case, it would be the ISG would be the registrant only because they would be defined in an RFC. The specification would be there and would be a working group product. So that's the way that works. Um, so yeah, and there were 31. Once we took those nine things together, there were 31 elements that were looked for. And this is, again, you know, it's a concept, so we just kind of looked at what was there when we put it together um, and made it made it self-consistent. So obviously there's some discussion to be had about whether that's the right set of data elements, if there need to be more or something like that. That's certainly all open for discussion. So that's one of the registries. There are two, two parts to this proposal. One is to have an IANA registry of the column heading, so the data essentially that goes into the reports. Next slide. The next thing is to similarly create an IANA registry of actual reports that are used and what they look like. Um, and, you know, this is all exactly what you would expect. It's fairly obvious stuff. You know, the report name, reference to the definition, and this is the critical part that ties it back to the other registry, the ordered list of column headings in the report using the ordinal value. Um, so let's go to the next slide and I'll show you what that looks like. This is actually the list of nine reports that are on the best practice at domain site. So we just kind of built this, built this out to, to show what it looks like. And you can see here that the report name is over on the left, the, a similar kind of reference and registrant, but the columns there, what you do is you list the ordinal number for the columns out of the column registry. So the data that you want in this report out of the registry of the data elements that are possible um, and uh, you make, uh, and that's an ordered list is what's important. And as you look through it, you'll see in, in some cases, the numbers there are certainly not monotonically increasing. Well, they're not increasing in, in any way, monotonic or otherwise, um, but it is a list of the uh, data elements that are in that particular report. And that's the way this much is supposed to work. So that's kind of the, uh, I mean, that in fact is the uh, proposal for defining, for creating a framework for uh, stability in this uh, reporting mechanism between registries and registrars. And these are the two parts that did get some traction there. Um, and then the rest of the other slides when we get to them here are more about topics for discussion that did not really have any particular consensus. And I'll talk about what was going on with them when, when we get there, but go ahead, Alex. Alex Mayover, Nick.it. Um, um, could you please explain which kind <clears throat> of advantage you expect from publishing that information via uh, the processes at the ITF rather than publishing them directly on bestpractice.domains? Yes, uh, and in fact, we had quite a lot of discussion about this even in the tech ops group going back to um, the May uh, Global Domains Division's ICANN's GDD Summit when the tech ops group had a meeting there. There was a lot of discussion about why um, this needs to be in, uh, in, in the IETF is sort of the selected SDO, if you will, to put it in. The problem with best practice, best practice domains as compared to this is it's not a persistent um, archived reference. That's the issue. It's just a website that somebody put up and as much as we might want to believe that it is an ideal thing, um, you know, the key characteristics of any SDO is that it is a persistent archived uh, point of reference. You could create the GitHub repository that's probably more stable than best practice and domains. Um, you know, we had the discussion before. This is rubber stamping of a draft so that it gets an RFC number so that somebody can walk up to a registry or a registry and say, hey, it's an RFC, you need to implement it. That's the only reason. And that was Tobias said to me in person. Well, it is a it is a market issue. Um, whether or not you're required to do something or, or not is, is I mean, the ITF Especially, has this. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Especially because obviously those documents get better review at the venue that's outside of the ITF rather than inside of the ITF. So why doesn't that venue over there care about publishing those documents? This is pure rubber stamping. Sorry. I I don't view it as uh, rubber stamping. I I can see where one might think of it that way. The 
the ICANN is not a, a technical body in that way. I would not expect ICANN as a body to produce, you know, this kind of technical specification, just me personally. Um, and in general, there's a, there's a relationship, broadly speaking, between the IETF and, and, and ICANN. You know, technical specifications are generally uh, looked for from, from the IETF uh, for the most part. And uh, ICANN does the policy work that goes, that sits on top of these uh, specifications. I mean, that's just me personally sort of talking. Others may have a slightly more nuanced view about it all. Um, you're right. I, I, I have said about the best practice.domains thing that, you know, as a, as a registry, okay, um, you know, on the business side, I, I don't want to implement something. I don't want to move towards something which is not, in fact, a, a persistent and archived reference. Um, and, you know, ICANN as an organization just doesn't have that facility. But, you know, this is a technical specification. IETF is an ideal place for it. It works. So I just came here with it. Um, there might be other places to take it, but this is sort of the natural choice. Sorry, Jim. This is as much as a technical uh, specification as the inventory list of a supermarket. Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. I'll leave it at that. <coughs> okay. Um, next slide. We did talk about some other things in that meeting. Uh, these are just some some things that had uh, come up, um, and um, they were not, you know, they were just they were discussion points. They were left as discussion points. There was no particular consensus about them. So um, I I collapsed based on the on the uh, comments that were in the tech ops meeting. These three items into you know uh, just baseline requirements is what I called them here. But anyway, the reports would be CSV files. The reaction from folks in, and I thought this was kind of interesting. I hadn't really thought about this until somebody started talking about it. But um, if you start talking about actually creating a file or having a file name or it being a CSV file, as opposed to focusing on the framework in which to produce the reports, whatever the report is, whether the report is a file or some other delivery mechanism, all right, um, then uh, you need to separate that, the distribution mechanism, the publication mechanism out from all of that. And that was really a discussion that we had gotten into. Um, some people may not want to produce these reports as files. They may have other mechanisms for doing it and other reasons for doing that, which might be perfectly reasonable. So an, an open question really at, at large in the community is what do we want the distribution mechanism to look like and do we want any kind of stability in that or not? So that remains to be an open question. And then, the, you know, the general question of uh, unrecognized column headings, um, what that really means. Um, if, a, if a report is in the registry and it has a certain set of expected data elements that are present in the report, um, what do you do if there are additional data elements in the report and how do you handle that? Some of that depends a little bit on the distribution mechanism, but we can probably find some words that move towards the direction of just, you know, ignoring them or at least being able to consume them but not actually doing anything with them. We'd sort of have to talk about what we want that to look like. So that's an open question. Uh, next slide. We did have some discussion at the time because when I had presented it at that time, um, discussion about a file name because there are other kinds of metadata issues. So one of the things that comes up is we do have the data set file format, which this group has looked at before. We've had a presentation about it and, and talked about it. One of the interesting things, um, a clear distinction between the data set file format and this proposal is the data set file format actually does cover uh, the metadata and, and the full set of metadata that would go with this reporting mechanism. This kind of has implied um, uh, metadata or some amount of metadata would be in the file name if we were to specify a file name for it. But that, of course, implies a certain distribution mechanism. So there's some question as to whether that's the right thing to do. And maybe we need to do something different. Um, and so, you know, that's why all of this is there. This was what the original proposal was. And thinking about file names, we tried to put out there sort of the minimum kind of metadata that one might want and need as part of doing this report. But again, it just became an open question when it was all done. I think that's it, isn't it? 
yeah, that was the last slide. So that's where we are. So these last two slides are, you know, still just sort of discussion points. I expect that we, the the next steps here are that we will have some discussion continuing on our on our mailing list here. Um, the the tech ops as a design team is going to continue to uh, you know talk about um, what would work best for that particular registry and and registrar uh, community, um, and then we'll um, just you know look to uh, to to continue and finalize any discussion here in the in the ITF. Marcos, um, Marcos Hanf, Denik. I'm not so much about uh, or against uh, standardizing this as Alex is. I'm, I'm a bit... I'm not against standardizing. Okay, <laughs> I'm unimpressed about this. Um, I just have the feeling that we are, you know, this working group is over and over and over again standardizing the same things. And this is just a new variation of escrow. If 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 this group says that escrow is is a working group item, and and we define escrow formats, this is the same thing. Just that the flow of the data is in another direction, but coming up with a new syntax and column headings, and it's 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 the same work as we done before. Um. I, just trying to think about how to, to you, you're right, you know, all of these are, are about data flow. Uh, I, I guess the only immediate observation that occurs to me is the actual data in each of these two sets of things really is, is somewhat different. You know, the, the escrow is about the registration data. Um, these reports are um, more about data that's coming through EPP. And, and collecting elements that are coming from there, especially the transaction reports, for example, um, or you know name service that go with the domain name. So there's a, it's not always true. I mean, there's a bias away from personal information, um, except that there are reports that do have personal information in them. Uh, so that's not really 100% true. Uh, but data escrow is very clearly all the registration data. Um, there's, there's a lot more data in these reports that is not in escrow. Um, I guess is really kind of my point at the moment. But otherwise, I, I take your point. I just, I don't know what to do with it yet. Go ahead, Alex. Alex again. Um, to be quite frankly and quite clear, I, I'm not against standardizing those things because we all know that those are a lot of a burden to the, the community of the registries, registrars, yeah? I just, as I said a couple of times, I don't feel that an RFC is like the right the right venue to publish it. and and. To be to give like the, to this a little bit of more of a productive uh, uh, touch. For example, there is something that's called the Registra Registry Data Group that exists as like an informal group within the center environment, sort of like. And we have been doing some kind of standardization there as well. And we have published a couple of documents, web pages on the, on a web page that that states how we as a group believe that things should be done. And, and people are actually implementing that. So, so that could be another way. I, it's a little bit sad to see that, to understand that the CPH tech ops can't publish stable documents, if I get that right, those stable document references. Um, but yeah, so again, I, I have nothing against standardizing those things. I just feel that the scope of the ITF doesn't really fit the purpose of those documents 100%. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Jim, if, uh, if I can step in, chair head off. Uh, I hear an interesting thing here. Um, we have had this discussion before, you know. Um, I realize that TechOps in, within ICANN is a GTLD only accessible group. Um, Center is a CCTLD exclusive group. We're here in the ITF to standardize things. If we want to standardize things, we should open these groups and discuss among them, among each other, you know, what the um, uh, what what the joint definition should be. Uh, I think that would be very valuable. Not everybody going to sit in their own group. And and with all due respect, I said this before, everything that comes from I can work in groups feels like pressure of doing things for policy instead of choosing the, the, the correct technical uh, 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 background. Um, I very appreciated that um, 
the tech house groups had a joint interim meeting with regex because that opened it up for other participants to join um but i think we need to have more of this to not get the impression that we are being run by ICANN. And that's just my remark. Um, go ahead, Barry, you go first. On, on. Alex is a lot taller than I am. Um, oh, so Roger Carney says, uh, another reason to bring to the IETF. I don't remember what he, what, what was being he, said. He's about. talking about this. I was yeah, going to yeah. make that comment too. I know where Roger's coming from. Thank you, Roger. I had that on my mind. Um, so speaking for my for myself, um, I let's see. <laughs> You're right. Center is is CCTLD. You know uh, this particular tech ops group is GTLD. That in fact is the reason why bringing it to the ITF, or it, it is at least another reason why bringing it to the IETF is sort of an ideal thing because it is an open group. Um, and I know that it's easy to think that something originates in ICANN. Um, and, and people have a, a certain target view about ICANN wanting to point a negative finger at them for any number of reasons. But, you know, speaking for myself, I, you know, this idea for this work might have originated at ICANN, but I don't see that as any different than the work originating anywhere else. You know, I mean, the idea came up. It's a problem that needs to be solved. You know, from my point of view, speaking personally, this is a good home for solving it. Um, I'm going to take advantage of whatever I need to take advantage of to get the best work possible. Um, and I think that it's incumbent on us to look at both the, what Center has done and what, you know, the, the Tech Ops group is sort of proposing. And we bring them here in this community and we discuss them here openly and bring both sets of groups here. Okay. So I don't, I don't see this as a, as a, a stumbling block or a concern. I, I see it as an opportunity, you know, and let's just bring the work here and, and do the right thing with it. And that's really, what I'm after here. Just a minute, Jim. Yeah. So, so my, my question actually is, are there other um, participants that we need to involve in this? A, a, apart from CCTLDs and GTLDs. So I'm thinking of RIRs, I don't know, enum registries. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm thinking of, you know, how can we get the most broad support for, for, for something to standardize? I, you know, I, I don't know. I think that's a standard problem, if you will, a standard problem in, in the IETF, you know, making sure you've got the right community of people. Look, you know, we have, we, we have put together a community of people who have a shared problem and they want to have a, a stable, um, you know, a singular, if you will, solution to that problem. And we're just a group of people uh, moving towards that. And, you know, that's sort of the role that the IETF plays. Do we have everybody in the IETF that we need? We don't recruit people per se. But I think that, at least speaking personally, I've done what I can to reach out to communities I can get to um, to, to get some uh, review uh, and, and cover of this, uh, this, this solution space that we're looking at here. And we'll continue to do that as we go along. Yeah. Looking at the time, I'm cutting the line after Wilhelm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Jim, a okay. couple of quick comments. Jim, I think your approach is very sensible and pragmatic, and you should just go ahead with this. Alex's concerns about the ITF rubber stamping are well made, but I think they might be a little bit misguided. And I think the thing to do here is it's quite clear that this working group seems to be the obvious focus for all this kind of effort, rather than have close communities such as ICANN, GTLD folks. Maybe ICANN registries, registrars have got a say in this kind of thing, a stake in this too. Plus we've got a centre, which is a closed club for European CCTLDs. Again, doesn't address the complete audience or the complete community. This seems the right place to do this kind of thing. So I think we should go ahead and do this work here. And if we feel that this is being abused because we've been just being expected to rubber stamp stuff that's done in anybody else, deal with that problem when it arises. Thanks, Jim. Rick? Uh, thanks, Rick Wilhelm. Um, just a, a comment, Jim. I think your, uh, your comments about the CPH tech ops are, are largely right on. I, I will offer that there's, there's not while there's been a fair bit of discussion about this at CPH Checkups, there's not um, a complete agreement and consensus on the problem to be solved, the way it should be solved, and, and such. So uh, it's not when we're when this stuff is coming here from CPH Tech Ops, it's it's not coming with sort of a a it's coming with a set of support, but not the massed and agreed 
uh, there wasn't a consensus call done within CPH tech ops or, or something like that, right? So there's still a fair bit of debate, my, myself uh, included, around the, the merits of this kind of a proposal and what it uh, memorializes because these reports are the manifestation of a business relationship between two entities and they're produced extra, extra contractually, by which I mean not as part of a contractual requirement which stands in contrast to the EPP work and the RDAP work, which is part of uh, both, uh, they are both part of contracts for GTLD registries and registrars. Thanks. Thank you. So um, thanks for all the comments. Um, I, again, I, I think what we're gonna do here is is continue this just as, as you know, design work, evolutionary work, much like registry mapping. It's just gonna move forward with a group of people and and we'll see where we get to with that. So we're not doing any kind of call for adoption yet, but this is just a heads up that this kind of thing is is moving forward and it'll stay visible just like registry mapping in, in this group and, and we'll see where it goes. So let me go back over, okay, here, yeah. over to you. Thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, well, actually, as part of um, this, uh, this item on the agenda, we were going to try to have a discussion on the new milestones. Um, but looking at the time, I think we will move that over to the uh, to the mailing list because we still have uh, two presentations and we only have 10 minutes left um, so let us continue on that we have a presentation again by Mario and Mario you have four minutes Uh, after last uh, meeting discussion about uh, the possible replacement of uh, JCAD with uh, JS contact uh, in ADAP, uh, I thought it could be useful for the working group to uh, have a short overview of uh, JS contact uh, to make you more aware of its uh, fun uh, features. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, to demonstrate that uh, it could really be a more efficient uh, alternative to JCAD. Uh, in brief, uh, JS Contact is a, a new contact card representation alternative to VCAD. Uh, like JCAD, it is JSON based and uh, it fully supports uh, the VCAD content, but uh, it's not. Uh, directly derived uh, by VCAD. Uh, it, it follows an agile structured approach to the information modeling. Uh, the main object defined uh, uh, the contact card named JS card and a collection of uh, contact cards named JS card group. Uh, the draft uh, is, uh, the, the last version of the draft is 05 uh, and is uh, uh, written by me uh, together with uh, Robert Stefanek uh, of Fast Mail, and the current working group is dispatched, even if uh, JMAP uh, seems to be. It, it is not. It, we are rechartering JMAP as we speak okay. to include this, so it'll be done in the JMAP working group. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the, 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 the draft <laughs> obviously is still in, bro in progress. We are. Uh, some open issues on the table, uh, in particular, how to represent the gender information, uh, uh, if we should include uh, uh, and how to include the information needed for the synchronization of multiple versions of the same contact card, and uh, uh, which is the best way to uh, represent the information about the preference. Uh, a new version uh, uh, is uh, ready to be published. One minute. One minute. Jump to the <laughs> skip this. Uh, uh, I, I want to only to uh, provide uh, you with uh, some examples. In the left side uh, of the of the slide, uh, there is an extract from. A, another response uh, using a JCAD and the right side there is the corresponding version of the JS card 
the properties involved are currently required uh, in RDAP. The other two examples are taken by some uh, use cases provided me uh, provide to me by Tom Harrison uh, to test the JS contact capability uh, to represent uh, multilingual information and uh, a structure data like formatted uh, addresses and formatted names. Uh, please uh, move to the next. Uh, this is an example of multilingual information uh, and, and, the, and the other. The next one is the, an example to, uh, to represent a structured data. The last slide is about a possible transition model between uh, uh, JCAD and JSCAD. Uh, the first scenario corresponds to the reverse status uh, implementing the current uh, uh, ADAP standard. So it is identified by the ADAP level zero tag in the ADAP conformance array. In this scenario, JCAD is required and JSCAD is optional. It can be requested uh, uh, by setting the parameter, parameter JSCAD to true. And the next uh, scenario is the scenario corresponding to uh, when the transition is completed. As in this scenario, the server uh, implements uh, J, uh, JSCAD as required and JCAD as uh, optional. I think that uh, this uh, transition model has some uh, advantages. Uh, only one content representation would be included into the response. Uh, the response would always be compared to FC7483, but what is much more important is that backward compatibility would be guaranteed throughout the transition, and the servers and client could execute their transition uh, in an independent way. That's all. Questions? Sure, please. The question, I, I should just, you know, take the discussion to the list. Yeah. Please take, take a look at the slide to have private uh, feedback to me. Okay, then we have a um, new, some newer suggestion for. Um, so very quickly, um, we did a we did a site meeting. Next slide, please, on domain suggestion. On Tuesday morning, we had about fifteen people in the room. Some of them were reading email, I guess. Um, it was mostly registry site people. And um, yeah, next slide, please. So domain suggestion. We I guess we all know what it is. The customer wants a domain name. Domain name is taken. Um, and the, someone proposes an alternative to the customer. So that's what uh, registries typically do. Next, please. Um, very quickly, that's, that's essentially the essence of things. So there's a name, it's taken, and some kind of tool proposes uh, a different uh, name to register to the customer. Next. So uh, the question is now with registrars. That was like directly the registry end of things. Registrars also want to do that, maybe. Some of them have quite sophisticated tools already. But if they actually fetch information from the registries for that, then they might want to have a standardized API in order to get that from the registries. Yeah. So um, registrars deal with many registries. So in, in turn, it would be really sad if each registry invented their own um, API for dealing with suggestions. Next, please. Um, yeah, essentially the protocol arena, we could do that over APP, we could do that over RDAP, we could do that over some other REST, uh, other protocols. There's a range of input data that's maybe useful to create domain name suggestions for a customer. Uh, some of that is actually a personal information of the customer, so that's tricky. Um, that's the area you can work in. Next one. Um, so there's Existing work, there's three things. Uh, there's an EPP extension from VeriSign that actually got, as far as I understand, deprecated or at least pulled out, out of the SDK in favor of a REST-based model. Um, there is uh, some work on RDAP-based uh, by Mario. Um, he uses a link in a standard RDAP response to point to a suggestion server and, and then delivers like a lightweight domain search researchery. And then there is another EPP extension that, that I actually created because I wasn't aware of the VeriSign extension that extends the domain check response. 
Next. So what was the major discussion during the side meeting? Um, so the major points were that the registrar is better positioned in the, has a better vantage point than the registry probably from many things because he's close to the customer. So he knows what the customer wants. Um, suggestions should sort of like belong to the free market. It's not something that the, 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 the registry should do. And the registry has like a little bit better vantage point because they are aware of expiring domain names and stuff like that. We also found out that EPP is probably not a good protocol choice in the first place because it's a static interface. It's for provisioning rather than for querying. Things like quota come into play with that. Um, any suggestion would introduce additional delay and dependencies in the registry core, which we all want to uh, avoid. And it does indeed address a different client set because the suggestion is targeted at the end customer while the EPP interface is targeted at the registry. So it might be related to the availability information. And for that, RDAP seems to be quite an interesting choice. Um, the problem with that was that the room was full of registries and there were a few registrars. So next one, please. Yeah, discussion. Um, if we would have time, that would have been the points that I would want to discuss. Um, but to sum it up in one sentence, I think I will go ahead and, and do some REST-based API that I will send out to whatever other group probably um, and, and see if somebody else is interested. Yeah, that's from my point. Is it interesting? Is regex the right venue? I start believing it's not, yeah. Roger Carney thinks this might be good for many smaller registrars. Larger registrars already do this. Jim Reed, I'm sorry to say, Alex, I think this is a very, very bad idea. It doesn't need to be standardized either. And given your earlier comments about rubber stamping, I think it's rather ironic suggesting bringing other work to the regex, which might be getting done elsewhere. I think this is a bad idea. Just kill it. Don't bring it here. Okay, fair enough. Okay, thank you. That brings us to any other business, and we're already one minute late, but I believe that Scott had a... Uh, yes, Scott Hollenbeck, and I'll try to go as quickly as I can, so thank you for sticking around. Uh, we have five proposed standard RFCs that have been out now for about four years. The RDAP specifications were published in 2015. We, right, so the RDAP specifications were published in 2015. We now have production implementation experience. Um, anyway, long and short of it, I'm thinking it's time that we look to address the captured errata, which are all editorial as far as I can tell, and take on an effort to move those five documents to internet standard status. So I had mentioned this at the Montreal meeting, you know, had a couple of sidebar conversations, attempted to get some things started on the list without a whole lot of success. Uh, but I do have a 7482 BIS sitting on a machine, you know, right over there. Um, and, and what I'm going to propose is that we, we take on this effort. And if, that, if we agree that we want to do that, I will volunteer to do a little bit of cat herding in terms of coming up with proposals for you know, document authors and document shepherds and, and whatnot. So uh, I'd like to ask the chairs and our AD if you think that this is work that we can take on. So thank you for that, Scott. Um, and as folks might expect, um, the ADs and the chairs have all had this discussion. And we generally agree that this is good work to progress with and that we, sh we should do this. Um, so it's just a matter of finding the right means to do it. There is a question about our charter, and we'll review that. We might need a tweak to the charter. We might not. Um, that's an open question. Um, but uh, we, we think this is a good good spot. And this speaks to George Michelson's issue, which he has now left the room, and so he's not going to hear this. This, along with, you know, sort of the J card stuff, all kind of fall onto the uh, RDAP side of our, our work items. So there's plenty of momentum here going on on both sides. So um, and with that. Yeah. I agree with Jim. <laughs> good idea. Any other other business? Going once, going twice, meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Rick, uh, Rick, Rick, Wilhelm. Yeah, before you duck out. Well, that was fun. Oh, there's one more blue sheet. Oh, yeah, it's probably all. Blue sheet? Anybody see the uh, clipboard somewhere? Blue sheets? There's one. Where's the other one? 
Anybody see the clipboard? Hold it up. No luck, huh? No joy? 